In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use ice tables to solve equilibrium problems. So in general, ice tables are very useful whenever you have a situation where a reaction is initially not at equilibrium, but then it shifts to meet its equilibrium. So let's do a problem. Five moles of I2 gas were mixed with five moles of Cl2 gas in an empty one liter flask. If the K or equilibrium constant is 0.25, find the final concentration of ICL gas. So I actually had to write out this chemical equation myself. I2 is gonna combine with Cl2 gas to be in equilibrium with ICL gas. And I actually had to balance the equation by adding a two here in front of the ICL. So you may have to do that yourself. So now on to the ICE table. So ICE stands for initial change and then equilibrium. So initial in this row we're gonna put the initial amounts of each of our chemicals. And in this case, we're using concentrations in units of molarity. So we know we started out with five moles of I2 gas, right? And they were in a one liter flask. Molarity is moles per liter. So we had five moles per one liter, so five molar I2 gas concentration. We had the same exact amount of Cl2 gas, five molar concentration. And notice we started out initially with no ICL gas. So on to the next row here, C, this stands for change. So this row we actually use variables and you usually will see X. So our reactants are gonna have negative X values while our product is gonna have positive X values. And since we have a coefficient of one in front of this I2, it's gonna be minus one X. We also have a coefficient of one in front of Cl2, so it's gonna be minus X. But since we have a coefficient of two in front of ICL, it's gonna be plus two X. Finally, the equilibrium row represents the equilibrium concentrations of each of your chemicals. And all you do to get your equilibrium row is you add together the I and the C. So five plus negative X is five minus X. Five plus negative X is five minus X. Zero plus two X is simply two X. Okay, so you can see the next thing I did was I wrote out my equilibrium expression. Kc is going to be equal to my product concentration in the numerator and its equilibrium concentration squared, because there's a 2 here for the stoichiometric coefficient, over the equilibrium concentrations of my reactants multiplied together. I went ahead and plugged in all of their equilibrium row values in for I2, Cl2, and ICL, as you can see here. And then I simplified the denominator into 5x squared, since it was 5x times 5x. Then I went down here and I plugged in 0.25 for my Kc, and that was equal to 2x squared over 5 minus x squared. And then to get rid of these squares here, I took the square root of both sides of the equal sign. So 0.25, the square root of that is 0.5, and when I take the square root of a fraction like this where there's a square in the numerator and the denominator, it simply cancels out those squares and we're left with 0.5 equals 2x over five minus x. Then I simply did some algebra to solve for x. So I started off by multiplying the five minus x by both sides and I got to here. Then I distributed the 0.5 into the five minus x. And with a little more rearrangement, you can see here it's just simple algebra. I found that x equals one. So once you find your x, you can simply plug it back in to each of your equilibrium terms to find the final equilibrium concentrations. So this means if x is equal to one, two times one is two, so the equilibrium concentration of ICL must be two molar. So that is our answer. But we can also find the equilibrium concentrations of I2 and Cl2. It's gonna be five, minus one, four molar, five minus one, four molar. So overall, the equilibrium concentrations are four molar, four molar, and two molar. So let's think about what happened to Q in this reaction. So initially, Q started out like this, right? We had zero molar of our products and five molar each of our reactants. So our Q was initially zero. But we want Q to get to K, right? We're at equilibrium when Q equals K. So we want Q to go up from zero to 0.25. And that's exactly what happened. At equilibrium, we had two moles of ICL, our product, and four moles each 
of I2 and Cl2. And when you calculate Q with those numbers, you end up with 0.25. So again, Q started out less than K at zero, and it increased to reach equilibrium at Q equals K at 0.25. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.